All right, what's up friends? I wanted to go through the process today of converting an SVG into a PNG uh, using a couple of different tricks that I have developed. And this is all to like create thumbnails automatically from a Rails application. And so I've got here, uh, I'm in Figma. And so this is where I generally work on designing the thumbnail. And so I've got a thumbnail design here. It has like a, the subheading and then it has the main heading, a little logo, and then maybe like a little floating window of myself hanging out over there. So like maybe for this video, I'll try to just grab some screenshot like this or something. Uh, and so that would be like dropped right here. Um, and so, the way that this works is like in, in Figma, I can specify that I want to export this as SVG. And so then I can say export thumbnail and this will give me a thumbnail here. And if I drop it and I can just say like, uh, this is a um, thumb demo. Okay, so I've created a new SVG called thumb demo. Uh, thumb demo. And if we look at the actual SVG, Right, it's just a bunch of sort of uh, HTML markup, right? Like this, this whole thing is just HTML. And so we can mess around with this to try to get this into the web. And the idea is that like, once we're able to render it on the browser, we can then um, drop in our own code that will render in place of these, this subheading and this main heading. So I, I kind of want to just like render this as if it was like an HTML page to a PNG so that it can then uh, so we can set up like one subheading and one main heading for a bunch of different videos and then have it just export several different thumbnails um, for a bunch of different videos. So if we take this thumbnail that we just created, right? And we just say, uh, let's open this in Finder. So if we grab it in Finder, thumb demo, and we just drop it in the browser, this will open like so. And so if we, you'll notice that you can't like highlight the text here. That's because when Figma exported, it did not export it as text. So if we inspect this, we'll see that uh, you can see each of these little elements, but it used a path tag to write this JavaScript basics thing here. And so what we wanna do is we wanna edit the SVG and replace this path with a text object. So uh, in, in SVG, we can use, we can use the, a text tag to create this text. So let's replace JavaScript basics here um, with uh, with just a text tag. So I'm gonna open um, open the demo here and I'm gonna delete the path. Oh, actually, let's leave, the, let's leave the path for now and just say text. And we have to give it the X and Y position. And we also wanna give it uh, a class. I'm gonna use a class and I'm gonna call this, um, I'm gonna call this this content here, the subheading. And so I'm just gonna give it a class of like subhead. Okay, and then in here I can just write whatever this was, JavaScript basics. Um, okay, so that's probably what this subheading actually is, is JavaScript basics just like that, right? And now in order to figure out where this thing belongs, X and Y, um, initially we can just, maybe we'll just give it like 200 and uh, like one, I don't know, 120 or something, just to like see if we can get it on the page. The other thing we can do is inside of the SVG itself, we can create a style tag and this will give us the ability to use CSS to style our SVG elements. So now we can say like dot subhead and we can say the, you know, the color is, um, because we have a, a, a pretty dark background, I'm gonna make the color white and then we'll just refresh the page here and see if anything is showing up. So we've got our style. I don't see that text anywhere. So let's try to find the text. Okay, so we can see the text object is in, is in the is in the HTML, but we don't actually see it showing up anywhere. Um, I can't remember if this needs to be fill. Fill instead of color. Okay, yeah, there we go. Fill. So the fill the fill populated it, and now we can actually highlight it. So that's kind of cool. So this is pretty far from this though, right? Like the, the, the font is different, the size is different, the location is different. So um, directly from the browser here, I'm gonna mess around with this number to try to get it to the right spot, 200, maybe 100. And if, if I look at the path, um, I don't actually know if this path has X and Y coordinates. 
Yeah, it doesn't look like it does. It does have a fill though. So this is probably the color that we want to fill with. So let's change this to use the, the color that matches. Okay. Um, and then instead of just using X and Y coordinates, um, I you know what, probably in this D, I bet you like there's something in this D thing that talks about where it actually lives. Um, but I'm just gonna keep moving this thing around. So let's say the X is 400. Okay, so that, that's too far. I think it's maybe want to go back 120. Uh, and then maybe this 77, so like 77, is the 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 x coordinate for the logo that's at the bottom so maybe that's like where this is aligned so let's try 77 okay that looks pretty good and then for y let's go 200 okay so we're almost in the right spot maybe like 210 um all right two let's go 300 that's too far 250 i don't know we're just kind of like moving it around right and then instead of so 77 and 250 let's make that update real quick uh here so we want 77 and 250. All right, and then what the other thing that we want to do is we want to change the font family so that it matches this this font family. So in Figma, um, for that font, I was using Roboto, which is available on Google Fonts. So if we go to Google Fonts, we can find Roboto. I was using uh, Light, Roboto Light, and the font size was 60. So I think we can just change, we can just set that here. So like font size, uh, 60px uh, font family is Roboto. Okay, so then if we refresh the page, um, we can see, like, I guess if we just delete this path element now, we can see that it's showing up, but it's not actually using Roboto because Roboto is an external font that needs to be loaded. And so in order to load this external font with light, so this is font family 300, Right, we can just take this, or we can use the at import statement um, to grab the font family. So I don't know if you can see that, but on the right, you can select at import, we grab this, and then we can drop that into our style tag to import that font. So now if we refresh the page here again, okay, so that's not working. Uh, there's, I think there's something weird where like, it can't read, yeah, okay. So like it can't, for some reason, it can't read the, the like ampersand in the URL. So it's really tough to see what this is looking like now. So I think I am just gonna delete, I'm just gonna delete the path for that element just so that we can see this. Okay, so JavaScript basics, that looks pretty good, but um, the other thing that I wanted to do was make it uh, all uppercase, right? I don't want to necessarily force the all uppercase as part of the subheading, but I do wanna force it so that it looks pretty for, um, for the SVG. So here we can say like text transform uh, uppercase, I think. Let's see. Yeah, okay, cool. So that is like almost exactly what it looks like in Figma, right? So that's pretty cool. And what's really neat about this is that if I change what the like subheading is, so if we're talking about Ruby meta programming, which is another topic that I talk about sometimes, let me go back to the browser and refresh Ruby meta programming. So that loads up fine. Um, so that's that's super cool. Let's let's do the same thing for um, for the main heading, and I'm just going to speed this up so that you don't have to watch me do the same exact thing. So let's do that. So here. Okay, so that's looking pretty good, right? That, that matches pretty closely for what we had before. Uh, in the original Figma, I actually used two different fonts for this main heading. We had how does, and then the this word is actually Roboto Mono, but I'm not gonna support that in this initial, this initial thing. So, um, all right, cool. So we've got the fonts working and we've got our thumbnail or like the SVG is like generally working. And ideally we could go in here now if we wanted to, and we could use ERB to you to like print out like at video dot title or something, right? Like if we wanted to, or subtitle or whatever, um, uh, or like, yeah, JavaScript basics, right? Like, so eventually we're gonna go through and replace 
these with um, with ERB so that we can render out and make that part dynamic. But uh, before we get that far, let's go to the next step, which is taking the SVG and converting it into a PNG. So now what we want to do is um, let's say we have we have this thumb demo. I'm going to copy that into public and I'm going to put it in public. Yeah, just I'm just going to put it in public directly. Um, and then I wanted to add a new route to videos. I'm going to call it get thumb here. And then this will be a member route for videos. So this this part is like Rails specific, but it doesn't really matter. Like I just I just need an HTML page where I can load up that SVG and work with it. So I'm just going to add I'm adding this, but this again like isn't really um, important for converting the SVG. Uh, Thumb.html.erb. Uh, okay, so at the very top here. Okay, so actually, there's so there's a code snippet that I found um, uh, here in this blog post um, that I'm going to use, and it's from what's it from? This blocks. What's it called? Yeah, so someone posted this code snippet about how to convert SVG to Canvas PNG. And so this is on blocks.org. And I'll drop a link to this in the, uh, in the description. But um, what it does is it has an SVG container, which has like the content for your SVG. And then separately, it has an HTML canvas and a PNG container. And then it uses a bit of JavaScript to read in and deserialize the SVG. Then it, uh, it grabs the canvas element and its 2D context. And then it finds the, the URL from uh, the window. So self, uh, self aka window URL, the WebKit URL, or the window. And then it's creating a new image with a blob from that SVG string. And um, so it's, t it's creating like a, the URL for the SVG string, setting that as the source tag of the image. And that means like as soon as the image loads, this onload function will run. And when it runs, it draws the image into the canvas and then converts the canvas into a PNG and then takes the PNG content and drops that in as the image source for our PNG container tag. And then I don't know why it needs this revoke URL thing, but I'm sure it's something related to uh, <laughs> uh, like memory leaks or something. I don't know. So let's, let's grab that code snippet. I'm going to drop it into this thumb here. Um, and so what this, Okay, so we, this is the code that we just went through, that we just walked through. So my canvas element, I'm making it 1920 by 1080 because that's the size of the thumbnail that I want. And then I'm reading in the thumb, the SVG file. So this is using ERB to just read in the raw content for that SVG. If I wanted to, I could just like write the actual SVG here. Uh, but the SVG file that we're working with, this demo one, is actually pretty big. So... Uh, like if we look at, um, if you look at some of the content here for these images, like the image in the in the bottom right hand corner, uh, this is like a full big picture. And in order to base sixty four encode this and have that in the SVG, it's like actually pretty massive. So I don't want to like copy and paste these around very much. So instead, I'm just going to read the file directly from the Rails roots public directory thumb demo. That's where we just pasted in the, the SVG that we were working with before. And ideally, it should load this up in the canvas and then print out in the SVG container. So we need to start our Rails server. Um, start Rails server, which is going to fire up on localhost 3000. Again, all you really need is an HTML page to load this in. Okay, so if we pull up localhost 3000, uh, we should get a list of videos. Okay, so this is a list of all, all of our YouTube videos. Make it a little bigger. If we click on one of them uh, and then just go to slash thumb, this is the new route. Okay, so here we see in the top, we see the SVG, and then in the bottom, we see the PNG, or we see the canvas, and then we see the PNG that was rendered. And you'll notice that the text did not carry over, or like the font face for the text did not carry over. So this ended up being just whatever the basic browser text is. This one down here is fine because this is a, a logo image and that's, that's not impacted, but um, the font families did not carry over. And so uh, there's, a, there's 
there's an issue with our SVG, and that is that um, this at import statement does not work when converting to SVG. So we need a different way to do this. Um, and so there's a, there's a couple different approaches to this, but the one that I have found to work is rather than using an at import statement, we need to use a font family, right? We're trying to use this at import statement, which actually creates font faces and the URL will be populated for us. So if we were to just do like a, um, like a curl request for that URL, we see the two font faces come back, right? So this is the two font faces that we actually want in our thumb demo.svg. Uh, so we can actually just paste those here. Um, and this will continue to work uh, on the SVG part, but not the PNG. So let's go look at this. If we refresh the page, you'll notice that the fonts continue working at the top, but not at the bottom. That's because the at import statement was basically just doing this exact same thing. So in order to make this work, we need to take the URL here to the TFF file and we need to base64 encode this. So we're gonna copy that URL. We're gonna use base64 and pass in that, um, actually, I think we need to download the file first. So let's, let's do curl the URL pipe to base64. So that should download it and then convert it into base64. And that's, that's like the, all of that binary that you see, that should be the base64 encoded thing, I think. Let's just make sure that this, Okay, so binary output can mess up your terminal output, use dash dash output. All right, so if I if I just do, instead of curl, I can just use wget and um, pipe it into, or let's just do wget and then we, we know the name is like kf o whatever, right? So we've got this file kf something something cat that into base64 and we get back the base64 for that TFF file. Now, if I use pipe um, pb copy, that will put it on the, on the clipboard for me. Um, and I can then replace this URL. Instead of using that URL directly, I can just dump in that base64 encoded string that we got back. So we don't have, this will cause it, to not download the font, but we'll have the font at all times available locally to the SVG. So there's no request, there's no network request that goes out. And so I think this will allow the SVG to render correctly. Um, there's one other thing that we need to do, and that is when we paste in um, the data URL like this, uh, we need to make sure that we're specifying all of the right properties and such for the data URL. So I'm just gonna let this complete. Uh, okay, so it's completed its thing. All right. And then at the beginning of the URL, we can't just start putting in the, the base64 stuff. So instead, we need to also put at the front, uh, this data colon font true type char set, tell it like all the different stuff about how to this is pretty common for data URLs, right? Like you have to do this with images also. Okay, so at least our light, our light font should maybe work. So let's refresh the page. We've got light font working on our SVG and on our PNG. Cool, so it's working, the light font is working on our PNG also. So let's do the same thing, but we'll do it for, um, for the, the, the heavy weight or like the bold, the bold one. Okay, cool. It looks like that finished. Um, so we need the same sort of preamble thingy here. And uh, let's see. Okay, so then if we refresh our page, we've got our font in the SVG and our font on the PNG. And if we right click and say save image as, you'll notice that this downloads as a PNG file. So if we go drop it in here and say like, this is our thumb, um, then we have saved a thumb that we can then upload to, uh, to YouTube if we wanted, right? Like this is, this is kind of what we, wanna, um, what we wanna do. So we were able to successfully uh, create an SVG with Figma, export it and convert the um, we converted the paths that used text into text objects that we can then go and dynamically render different text here. Uh, then we fought with Google Fonts for a bit to get our font fully embedded so that it could 
convert to a PNG when it's rendered. I'd love to hear how you're going to use this in your own application. If you want to leave a comment in the in the comments below, that would be awesome. Uh, yeah, just curious how other folks are trying to use SVGs and convert them into PNGs and why. So uh, yeah, drop a comment. And yeah, in the ex in the next episode for this series, we're going to be taking this thumbnail creator and then populating it with the actual video content from Rails. So this is going to be specific to just like how do you convert SVG to PNG? So, uh, all right. Thanks, friends. Thank you.